All right, so here's chapter eight, part two. So chapter eight, part one was elimination reactions. Now in part two, we'll be actually combining substitution and elimination together. All right, so let's, let's go back and revise what we learned before. So for substitution, we need sp3 carbon with a leaving group, right? And we need a nucleophile, right? So if you have these two conditions, we can do substitution. For elimination, we need alpha carbon with a leaving group, okay? We need beta carbon with at least one hydrogen and a base, right? So there's one common thing you see between substitution and elimination here is a nucleophile and a base, right? So what's a nucleophile? Anything which has a negative charge or electron pair, okay? And what is a base? Base is also the same thing. Anything which has a negative charge or electron pair, all right? So that's our base. So in other words, if you have an OH minus, right, so that can be a nucleophile, and OH minus can also be a base. So in other words, if you have an OH minus, that can also do substitution in the same reaction, and that can also do elimination in the same reaction. So you should expect two products, or maybe more, depends on how many beta carbons we have but you can expect at least two products. One will be substitution in product, and one will be elimination product, okay? But there's an exception here. When you have, when we talked about the base, where we talked about the bulky base, which is potassium tertiboxide, and that is base only. So this cannot be a nucleophile. So that means it can only do E2. Reaction. It cannot do substitution. Other than that, all the bases should be able to do substitution and elimination at the same time. Right? So what we'll do now is, based on this idea here, we'll do one example where we combine substitution and elimination in the same example. Right? So let's see how it will look there. So we'll start with a simple example, and we'll do one example with with stereochemistry. So let's all right, so here. And we have OH minus. Let's keep it simple for now. All right. <clears throat> so OH minus can be a nucleophile and it can be a base, right? So we will do for one thing at a time, okay? The best way to handle it is do one thing at one time, right? So let's start with substitution, right? So this is a secondary carbon and strong, that means we are doing SN2. So let's write down SN2, all right? So what happens in SN2 then? I will not write down the mechanism because this is a simple reaction now. So attacking and leaving at the same time and you will have the product. This will be your substitution product. All right. Now, once you've got your substitution product, don't go back to a substitution. Okay, let's focus on elimination. So for elimination, what you need, you need alpha carbon with a leaving group and beta carbon with at least one hydrogen. So do we have a hydrogen here? Yes, so that is your alpha and that is your beta. All right. So this beta is same as this beta because those two sides are the same. So you can choose any beta here. Right. So we have Alpha carbon, beta carbon, we have a base, so definitely we can do elimination with this because we have all the conditions needed for elimination, and that's a strong base, so that will do E2 mechanism, all right? So what happens in E2 then? Base will go pick up the hydrogen, that will leave the electron pair between alpha and beta, and at the same time, leaving group will leave. So you'll have, your product should have a double bond between alpha and beta. So that's your alpha carbon, that's your beta carbon and you have your <clears throat> double bond between alpha and beta. So this is your substitution product. And that is your elimination product. All right. So you'll always have two products, okay, substitution and elimination product. Let's have another example where we actually have a stereogenic carbon. 
All right, so let's say you have, all right. In this case, we throw OH minus again. So secondary carbon, strong nucleophile will do SN2. Okay. So SN2 attacking and leaving at the same time. Since bromine is on the front, the nucleophile has to go on the back side. Or another way we can figure it out is they should have exactly opposite configuration. So this is your R. That means your product should be S. So this is your R and that is S. And when you're doing elimination, okay, so that's your substitution product right here. When you do elimination, we are trying to find out, so you have alpha carbon with a leaving group and how many betas we have. So we have a beta one and beta two. Right, so that's your alpha carbon right here. And we have beta one and beta two. So beta one has a hydrogen and beta two has two hydrogens as well. Right, so there are two hydrogens here. But this hydrogen is not suitable for elimination because they're on the same plane. Remember, when you have stereochemistry given, when you have up and down given to you, okay, the leaving group and the hydrogen, they should be anti. Okay? That's the rule. But in this case, they're not anti, they're on the same side. Okay? Anti means one up, one down. Okay? So this is up, this has to be down, or this one up, this down. But they have to be up and down. Okay? So this is not eligible, that means we cannot do elimination with this beta, we can only do elimination with this beta right here. Okay, so that will be alpha and beta, and that to put this hydrogen. So there should be a double bond between those two carbons. So that should be your elimination product. We haven't touched this, so that will stay the way it is. In both the cases, we haven't touched that carbon. That will stay the way it is. So that is your elimination product. That's your alpha and beta carbon. Right? 